we've looked at um, objectives. Let us look at uh, a very important aspect of objectives, which is the mission of the company. The mission of the company is the statement from which all objectives follow. Uh, we earlier we talked about um, HDFC, right? We talked about how HDFC is a company which uh, would want to provide uh, the best possible loans to uh, the common man to allow him to set up a um, set up his own house, right? Now that is the mission statement of HDFC, right? Now the mission statement elaborates the basic purpose for which the organization exists. Now this is the cardinal first principle from which all other objectives follow. The mission statement must mention for whom does the organization exist. HDFC exists for the common man. Merrill Lynch exists for the business investor. The mission statement must mention what is the business of the organization. HDFC exists to allow the common man to own his own house. Merrill Lynch exists to permit the corporate investor to access corporate funds in the most convenient fashion. The third point in the mission statement is the question of how does the organization compete. This is again a very, very important part of the mission statement because different organizations lay emphasis on different things. Some organizations lay emphasis on timeliness. Other organizations lay emphasis on propriety. Yet other organizations lay emphasis on equity. Now, the emphasis of the organization is specified in the third aspect of the mission statement. When we talk about objectives and mission statement, we must also talk about the stakeholders in any business organization. Right? Some stakeholders are obvious. The employees of a business organization are definitely the stakeholders in the organization. So are the promoters, the people who have set up the organization. What about um, the financiers? What about people who have uh, provided funds to the organization, right? They may not have set up the organization, but their funds are blocked in the organization. They are stakeholders too of the organization. And then you have customers, right? Customers are uh, stakeholders. Customers expect certain benefits from the organization and they have a stake in the organization. Suppliers are stakeholders in the organization because suppliers have a relationship with the organization. Suppliers have contracts. Suppliers have agreements with the organization. Then the public is a stakeholder in the organization. If the organization is has a plant has a factory in a particular area, in a particular geographic area, 
the people living around the factory are affected by what happens in the factory. For instance, right, if the company makes products for children, for instance, and those products turn out to be um, disadvantages, turn out to be harmful for children in the long run, then the general public has a stake in the company. So, public is a body which is also a stakeholder in the company. And lastly, we have the government. Right? The government uh, has set up policies, has set up has certain incentives for industry and the government is also a stakeholder in business. So, an organization has all these different kinds of stakeholders. Let us now look at uh, what are the interests of these stakeholders, of these different stakeholders, and um, how these stakeholders may possibly behave in a manner which is harmful to the uh, benefit of the company. Right? Remember, the company is one entity, the stakeholders are a different entity and the stakeholders may believe that what the company does is not, in their not to their benefit, in which case they might act against it. Right? So, let's look at this. Before we do that, before we do that, let us classify these uh, stakeholders into uh, internal stakeholders, connected stakeholders and external stakeholders. Right? Internal stakeholders are people like promoters and employees who are part of the company. Connected stakeholders are people like financiers, those who have provided loans to the company, shareholders, not promoters, other shareholders who have invested in the equity of the company, customers who buy products from the company, suppliers who supply components to the company, who supply raw materials to the company. Right? So, these are the connected stakeholders in the company. And then you have the external stakeholders who have no direct link with the company but have bondages with the company. These are the public and the government. Right. Now let us look at each one of these stakeholders. Let us look at their interests and let us look at how they may react in a situation where they feel that their interest is being damaged, that their interest is being uh, trampled by the activities of the company. This is very important from the objective point of view because when you set objectives of the company, you must look at how those objectives will appear to the various stakeholders within the company. 